And here we go. This is Flash at the Dork Table on Saturday, the 15th of December, 201 and 8. We're hanging out at the reallibertymedia.com, well, the chat room of it, and uh, seeing just a few faces pop up into my morning, well, my evening, your morning. Anyway, we uh, Grim puts us out places. If you don't know where they're at, ask Grim, he'll tell you. And if you're listening, I sometimes the show's pretty good, so I appreciate that. And we want to say hi to the people that are hanging out at the reallibertymedia.com chat room. And that would be Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, and Ty, Asmo, Chouse, Doni, Circle, Hello, Honey, Chloe, Me, Graham Z, I Be Don C, J Dread, Meister Brow, Ponder Gander, A Vinny, Pox Fight, Pox Phone, Rain, Arlen Fluke, Rob Works, A Rob Works, Trust, Number One, Vinny, Phantom, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, D Dork Cake Z, Frumpy, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, J's Nines, J's, Kozu, mm, mm, Pox at Home, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, and Skittle. And we got us a, a little Saturday afternoon here in Denmark. Well, late afternoon. I like to start this about 6 o'clock. And today, I was asking Cirque, like, I don't know, was it a week or two back? I told her, give me a topic. I'm going to do a solo, I think. And she said, eh, do reality. So, I managed to do a whole whole show by myself on reality without actually hearing myself repeat where maybe the idea to somebody else would have seemed repetitive. But to me, I got... I did what I set out to do on that particular podcast, and I wanted to give it another try, so I asked the Cirque today, hey, what what do you think I should use as a topic of discussion on my entertaining dork table extravaganza program? And she said, "Uh, honesty, so I'm going to do a show today. Thank you, Rob Works, for remembering to pass around the necessities in life. Oh, and speaking of honesty, it's like the difference between uh, the marijuana cannabis situation being what it is. That's all based on lies and deception and bullshit. And had they ever been honest, I don't know how they pulled it off at the time. If the people of the day were using cannabis and hemp products openly without any intrusion or any problems, health problems or risks, or it was using it for the benefit of everybody, how did they manage to convince decades of people that the same freaking thing that your grandparents were using is somehow because it turned this guy into a bat bad for you and then even then just because it was the cannabis plant what did the hemp plant how did that get stuck into the the equation of this is illegal you know because illegal is just the same thing as legal it doesn't matter When you prohibit something, and then you therefore you find it necessary to make some bogus fucking law with a, a punishment financially, or maybe they want you in prison at the end of it, and it's all bullshit related to a, a plant in the first place. It's, there's no victim. There's no crime. And here we are, 2018, and some states are making pot legal. Isn't that wonderful? And I think to myself, well, why don't they just do what they did with alcohol and legalize it? Oh, isn't that smart? Why didn't they just turn a blind eye to it? Because there's money to be made off of it. And I think the honesty thing today, there's so many sides of the honesty, but I'm going to pick on the idea of like, um, what was it? Monsanto fought and 
courts forever to get a, a patent on something that they must create in their laboratory that comes out and somehow it's magically very similar to the results of cannabis. But what we're going to get is the same principle as oil. You're going to get something that you shouldn't touch because when it's broken down into its basic components, they're not good for you at that level because it's synthetic. And I, th I think that was the point is synthetics have been pitched to us as better than and better for you. Mary was talking about it last night on her show. The government has written the laws to suit the crime that they're doing in every fucking area. And there's another honesty. They, they say that it's legal to use chemicals, but call them natural because what the fuck? There's no difference between nature and science. They're just words. They don't, there's no difference. They mean the same thing. If the person listening is taught to believe that, one or the other is better or there is no difference between the two. Now, I'd call that a dangerous, dishonest way of explaining it. And the next guy would argue with me that, no, that's how it works. Because I think the duality has a lot to do. The good and evil, honest versus dishonest. Oh, crying out loud. It, you can accidentally tell people lies but not know that you're telling lies it just depends on the uh, the knowledge that you received in the first place to start out with i mean how we could talk about any subject at all but my favorites are always the kennedy thing and then a 9-11 thing and it's so easy to put the dots together and come out with a picture of a big jewish nose and an american flag and a set of knee pads but Americans don't want to do that. And I lived in America, so oh, yeah, 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 I know. But what the fuck? I mean, why can't you just admit you got screwed and, you know, work beyond it instead of dwelling on that? Oh, look at how bad things are and it, it's never going to change and all these this, that, and the others are making it worse. Hey, Grimner just put me up on the RLM mean feed on uh, the dork table with me today, live. On right, channel 8. And yeah, he carries us at places like BitChute and YouTube and Spreaker. And, but he's added so much stuff. Mary goes on about it. And I appreciate it because, I don't know, I like doing this. So I guess some, you know, if there's going to be anybody out there to hear it, it's nice to be noticed. But a lot of it is just my version of what I see is so different than the expression that I see from other people that are involved in it in different ways than I am. Um, voting, whew, education, religion, all these organized things are the pretty much the downfall. The bigger you get, the more dishonesty and problems that come towards you trying to acquire your wealth trying to get you to join their side so you can you know make a bigger thing and be something hmm. now that's a fine way to live if you're a barbarian but you know we're supposed to be living in a in a civilized time where people can read and write we have access to all the answers and here we are, still voting for Hillary fucking Clinton, Donald Trump, like either of those two dickheads is going to change anything. In fact, I haven't seen Hillary Clinton in probably a year. And I was just listening to Mary or reading something that insinuates that the Hill Dog is still involved in the game, but there's no live feed of her. There's no pictures. There's nothing. She's like McCartney, just disappeared and turned into Angela Merkel. But that's a dark table of another color. We'll get to that soon. Um, what's Mental Pancakes is posting like a crazy man on the reallibertymedia.com room. And what does he have to say? Hmm. I don't know. He's all about touring Port Royal in Jamaica. Are you going back to Jamaica, Mr. Cakes? And if you do, stop by Denmark on the way back. <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll we'll roll a couple, me and you and the wife, and uh, talk about RLM people and how out of tune with reality they truly are. Right, Rob Works, you Republican guy. I don't know. I don't really give a shit about any of that political stuff in the first place. I think it's all equally insane. Mm. Well, no, well, you know, not only to tell the truth, I'm going to interrupt myself with this. Vinny says, the dork table, honesty, to tell the truth. Sometimes it's a shock to hear the fucking truth. In fact, most people hear the truth. They go, nah, that ain't true. That's just a bunch of nonsense that the crazy people want you to believe because they don't like the guy in the office. Well, no, most of the crazy people that don't believe don't like the office. It's got nothing to do with Trump or Obama or Bush or Washington. It's the seat of power. Listen to Hal sometime. Hal explains all this shit. These things are they are misrepresented to us through the the culture that we live in through the education and the tv and all the radio all these things billboards and magazines christ i didn't even read a magazine because just something about them they're very unattractive to me i don't feel drawn to ever pick up a magazine but Lots of people, I, I don't know, I guess they still do. They've got a lot of folks still uh, are running around with the electronic world in hand. But there's still places where they don't. And then there's places where your electronics don't work. Hmm. Or perhaps they don't work as good as you want them to. Uh, like if you have a, a restricted amount of bandwidth like Rob Works goes through. I don't know if he sorted that out completely, but he seems to not get booted off every 20 minutes anymore. And I just let sleeping dogs lie. I didn't want to discuss it after he fixed it. We just let it go. I brought it up on the radio because I'm talking about honesty today. Honesty! And sometimes, if you tell me a lie, how the hell do I know it's a lie? If you're telling me and you're my trusted and worthy uh, compatriot and we we do things together and I believe you and all that kind of shit well what if you're telling me something that I truly know is bullshit but you don't is that still being dishonest and then wow it, it opens up that doorway to you can't tell your friend he's full of shit because your friend's going to get his feelings hurt and take it personal and not understand you're talking about the game you learned as a child is all nonsense. None of it. It's all crap. All of it. All the explanations are all crap. All the details we get fed are all crap. What actually happens is the almost the exact opposite of what you are told happens. Whether you physically see it in a video or not, they're going to pound you with an opposite version of reality through your ears and every day over and over until you give in and you join the group that says this is what it is and if you don't now now they get punishments for it what do they call it climate change deniers well let me jump on that group i'm a climate change denier whatever the fuck they want to call it it was a scam from the gate it's going to be a scam and they're never going to lose this one Boy, they lost alcohol and they lost weed, but the climate, that, see, that gets everybody. Because not everybody was a, a victim of drugs or drug addicts or any of that through history. I still think that was a, a select percentage of, of the population got the, the pleasure of dealing with the, uh, the legal administration and their, you know, their stealing through enforcing ignorant fucking laws based on ignorant fucking laws because we used to have search and seizure honesty here we go once upon a time the cops couldn't just search you they stopped you they still couldn't search you they had to ask you permission can i search your car and if you said no then they go well we'll get a warrant you didn't sit there in the fucking car and get telling them well go get a warrant all that does is pushes them to not use a warrant and just say they had probable cause. Argue about it in court. They don't care if they lose. They win or lose 
no matter how they play. You are the one that it matters to. So, hmm. engaging an enemy of that caliber is a dead end. You cannot win with these people. So, the, the best you can do is not engage them at all. And if you're one of the lucky people out there in a you know the free world who has not engaged the freaking out-of-control maniacs that they call police, oh, my hat is off to you. I wish you much success. I don't even, you know, I don't wish you bad luck. But when it comes to the, you know, the police and all, that's all that crap is. Those people, you can't solve a crime. How do you solve a crime? The crime already took place. What did you solve? No, you can get revenge for a crime. And then you got to think about, are you being presented with a real person that did anything or is this just the state telling you so? Well, they're not very honest because there's lots of people that have been incarcerated for many, many, many decades that didn't do a fucking thing. But the system that existed at the time wanted the public to believe that the people that they're pointing at were the guilty party. And all they were doing was protecting a government entity known as the CIA. Yeah, don't think I'm making this up. There's links up the wazoo. Nobody gives a fuck anymore if you openly talk about this shit because it's uh, it's not special anymore. You know, everybody's got their group. Oh, look, the weirdos are talking about... <clears throat> The fr Okay, here, I'll change to this. Grimner says, where is this free world you speak of? Flash somebody. Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> At the end. And I say unto you, sir, it's between the boundaries of my imagination, just like yours. You know, Because they, if they lock you up, they might have your body, but they don't necessarily have your mind. You know, You can still... Um, just like in society, they've got your body. It's the same f to me. I don't see any difference in the long run uh, f emotionally, but I see it physically. Like my roommate has got boobs. That's kind of nice, you know. I'm not locked up in an you know eight by ten cage with some other guy. That would suck to fucking hell and back. But it's you know. The honesty of it is I chose to be partnered with somebody. So it's the it's the same uh, explanation with a different color to it, but it means the same fucking thing in the long run. Because when I was free, the last thing I wanted was a relationship, <coughs> a job, a place to live. I wanted to be free and to go where I pleased at any given time. And with that decision through the years, that depended on, you know, how much crap do you have? If you got a lot of crap, you cannot be free. But what time will teach you is if you get a lot of crap and you want freedom, there are many, many people who would be happy to liberate you from the things that tie you down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're bankers, lawyers, police. And then after that come the crooks that'll steal it from you when you're not looking. And, you know, all these things are a direct byproduct of the design of society. And they tell the people that use society, oh, this is how it works. And they lie out one side of their mouth. And then when you live in the society, you find out, wow, it doesn't work the way they told me. Hmm. But you have to go breaking it down to its smallest elements like, uh, hmm, is the money perhaps rigged, the money system that we use? Is it real? Of course it's real because we are in a joint illusion, but, huh, is it actually real? Hmm, maybe not. Read about that. Get the people's opinions of the, of the time when this stuff was all happening and see how they spoke of the central bank in the using the central bank and the federal government and all that. The people's politicians were against it. The bankers' politicians, on the other hand, they had other ideas. So they they 
snuck things through in legal fashion, but sneaky, uh, unethical, deceitful, showing us the path right there. Just if you go back, you go, oh, they lied. Well, yeah, but they didn't lie here, and they told the truth there, but they lied again. Wait a minute. We got, what do you call somebody that lies to you about something and then tells you the truth four or five times. And then five years go by and all of a sudden they're lying again to you. What do you do with somebody like that? Do you continue to associate freely with uh, a person in your life, a human life that behaves in that fashion? Some of us seem to. It's like we're, we're so used to dealing with the bullshit artists of the world that it's just common. It, there's nothing to avoid because everywhere you go, you're just going to run into more bullshit. I don't believe that. I think if you're stepping in bullshit, it's because you want to. I've grown to believe that if I'm stepping in shit, it's a choice that I'm making to do it. And that's pretty much how I feel about that. That's honesty. Mm -hmm. Could say... Uh, all that tough guy shit, you know. But unfortunately, like all the tough guys, I don't have the desire to uh, hurt anybody with a pussy weapon like a fucking gun. I mean, good lord, if you're going to get violent and hurt somebody, use your freaking hands, you pussy motherfuckers. What's wrong with you people? You know, oh, we need guns for defense. No, you don't, because now... What you're going to defend yourself from with a gun, a gun will not protect you from. So, nah. I mean, at least I looked at that Waco thing from both sides of it. The government side, which made them look bad, and the them side, which made the government look bad. And at the end of it, I was truly convinced that the government acted out of pocket. And the people that they attacked, if I was them, I would have done the same thing protected myself okay the whys and all that shit really don't fucking matter when you think about we live in a free world where people don't need to be physically assaulted and when the police came they said go away we don't want to deal with you so what did they do they came back in force and that's the problem you know, instead of just dealing with the, wait until the guy went to a, a gas station or a liquor store and then talk to him in public somewhere. No, they have to raid his fucking home and burn the whole fucking place to the ground at the end and make it look like, as though the government is the victim of what everybody witnessed when it was that overplaying of force, you know, when you preach freedom and, and justice and all this shit, and then you come in shooting people and attacking them with assault weapons and they fight back, you're the victim. How does that work? Hey, liars and liabilities. I'm scribbling for you, Flash. Oh, good. Thanks, Vinny. No, I understand that, Grimner, that taking fist to a gunfight is probably a bad idea. I'm not saying it. I'm saying that I consider guns kind of a pussy's weapon. What do you need a gun for? I mean, it's over. It's too much, you know? And if you're going to do that, why don't you have the decency of a challenge? Give the guy a couple hours notice. Say goodbye to your wife. I'm going to blow your, fa your face off at four. You know, it's 12 o'clock. Get your shit together. And this is why. Not not this stupid crap. I'm going to defend my fucking home from the government. Are you stupid? How many people have they thrown out of their house with illegal... Um, what do you call that when they eviction? Illegal bank evictions. Mistaken, error-prone bank evictions. And nobody fights back or does anything about it. They just talk shit on the internet to look like... Something they were 40 years ago that's well fucking over and done. Look at your public, for crying out loud. Look at your representatives. Bunch of... You got the same lying, greasy, freaking crooks today that they had when I was growing up. When I was a teenager. Nixon and his band of fucking rimrods. What's his name? Uh, Rock, uh, Rockefeller. But uh, Well, Rockefeller was a governor. But there was Kissinger and Hill Dog and Billy Boy was coming up the ranks. And, you know, there's another thing. Honesty, Bill Clinton was born under a freaking different name. 
than the name he carried as the president. Apparently, so did Obama. So there's Republican and Democrat in two sentences. But, you know, if these people are so dishonest and it's so in front of you and so open, it's common. There is no honesty left. If you've got any and you're using it, it people don't notice. People notice the thief and the liar. But it doesn't seem like history has a whole fucking lot to say about anybody that's ever been or done anything good for other people that, that died poor. Because <laughs> if you do shit for other people, how do you amass wealth and conquer other people? There's no balance to it. You got to go one way or the other. And unfortunately for my wife, I'm not going to go out there and you know, try to conquer the financial fucking world because it's a bunch of crap bunch of nonsense existing in it is not as bogus as participating in the accumulation of it but it's similar i mean wow because we're all living on these little cards oh you go to the thing and they push buttons and there's little cards so the future all this uh, stuff that we were being warned about it already happened <laughs> <laughs> and, and but we're free oh i'm so free i can go wherever i want to look i have a card <laughs> a passport you know a, a bank visa card or a what is it? what's that a mastercard card or a oh wait no i thought that was somebody on the wire it's not it's my um internet stuff talking to me because uh oh i went to um realliberty.org today hmm and I was a little disappointed to see a person that I know from long ago there. And now, Cirque got a little more upset than me, and she deleted her account. What I did was I just went on there on that, uh, what do you call it? Let me open this and look what it's called. At my, does something to my VPN, my browser thing, right? <clears throat> this is how honest I am, right? So I go to privacy, and it goes secure VPN browsing private. And I felt it necessary because got such a bad history with this particular guy that I, I won't name Koss. And uh, from another site that will go nameless, World Truth, Old Days. And uh, what happened was just uh, inconvenient, not, nothing financial on my end. He didn't take anything from me. But what he would do was do create shit on the internet and blame, claim, and blame that I did it. And the people that know me know I don't, neither do I have the interest in learning how to use the computer. But way back then, I didn't even know what the fuck anybody was talking about, let alone know how to do it. And today, ah, here we are. So Cirque just went, and because we've had, you know, problems with this guy, she just deleted her account off the whole site. And that's, you know, that's kind of why I married her, because... When she makes up her mind to do something, that's the end of that. She does it. And there ain't no talking her in or out of it. She thinks for herself, just like I do. And I have the same distaste for the guy, but I want to support the site. So I went to my VPN. I hope this worked, but it's being dishonest, you know, so that if anybody looks at my shit and it comes back to them, they find me in Los Angeles where I'm not. Hmm. Oh, I know that. It was just my joke, Grimner. I, I said that. I said it's somebody I won't name, and then I name him, because that's what I say. That's my, like my catchphrase at the dork table. I do things wrong. I do things wrong to be, you know, like uh, entertaining, because I think it's funny. Unfortunately, my sense of humor is a few years behind everybody else's, and I'm the only one that laughs. <laughs> that's why people tell me, you'll never grow up. But, the good side, I, I'm honest about it. You know, I don't pretend to be something I'm not, so you'll dig me because I'm cool. You know, I'm just a freaking dork just like you, and that's it. It's not a contest. If you want to make a contest out of it, leave me alone. Ah, that's where cause pissed me off is the contestant, you know, that f that always in your face with I know more and I'm better than, and, 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 like hands, only... only well, no, pretty much just the same thing, only causes smarter, way smarter than hands. 
Hands, that's why I tolerate. Hands is just a sneeze compared to cause. Cause is actually a worthy adversary. But he does it on the computer. He doesn't do anything in person. He's too much of a pussy for that. And enough said about my worthy adversary. I'll go on. But an excellent reference to the term honest. Because maybe his definition of being honest is different than ours too you got to think about that some people do things in stupidity or you know or they do uh, they do stupid horrible things and their motive isn't financial their motive is just you know irritation monitored i'm going to get under your skin and irritate you that is my goal in life that's what i do i'm called cuz it perhaps that was the goal, you know, just to be a, a an itch that you can't reach. So my dishonest side says to me, well, don't don't delete the whole site because, you know, wife has a problem with it. That's your wife. Let her be. She's her own person. Now me, um, careful-ish, you know, kind of like, because ah, like I said about the story on the train, I went somewhere with a complete stranger I'd never met before on on the, the whim that he may not be lying to me. Because for a moment, it was too good to be true, and I thought, I'm getting screwed here somewhere. And when the end came, my nothing happened. Everything was exactly the way the guy told me. And that is how life should be. We're not supposed to be surprised by the truth. We're supposed to be disgusted by the lie, not and it's the other way around. You tell somebody this weird thing happened because I'm a you know a careless idiot and I run around the world and I don't care what I do. I just do shit. And they laugh at you because oh you're crazy. You're gonna get it's like the pot thing. Oh I smoke pot with Willie Nelson. Well, what the fuck did Willie Nelson ever do that was famous besides smoke pot? There's no physical explanation for it. We got high and we watched some brain, you know, pinky in the brain and ate cookies. Oh, it was so fun. And that's the beauty of pot is it makes mundane, boring shit seem like you're in paradise. You know, if you got to wash the damn dishes, smoke a joint before you wash the dishes. That'll give that'll give you some insight. Then you'll go, wow, I wonder what the dish is thinking. <laughs> I'm kidding around, but what I mean is, you know, the, all the drama comes from alcohol and, and pills and mixing alcohol with with weed, because if, you, if you've smoked pot, you know this, you will do things drinking alcohol that you will never in a million years you do smoking pot. Pot will never put you out of control mentally so you can't ex you know, think your way through a situation. Now, alcohol, you may find yourself sitting in a puddle. Maybe it could be a, what do you call it, a fountain. You might come to and say, why am I sitting in this pond? <laughs> this, uh, whatever did I just say? Um, <laughs> I lost the word. Um. Damn, I lost the damn word for, you know, the fountain. There you go. <laughs> anyway, but smoking dope, you just stand there looking at the pond or the fountain for hours and entertain yourself. You, Your mind is just more entertaining. But alcohol will take you places that, you know, they're sometimes they're regrettable, depending on what you get involved in. And I don't think that you can compare alcohol and pot. But what does the system constantly fucking shove down our throats? People that drink smoke weed. People that smoke weed drink. Do them both together. And when you look at it, the number of people that mix the two together is probably 10% of the people that drink alcohol will even touch pot. And I say it was just yesterday. I was down at the Danish grocery store getting necessary provisions for me in Circle. And uh, I picked up the lighter. This had a light. You know, they get these little things the lighters sell on your way out. And I picked it up and it had a child lock on it. And out loud I said, ah, I'll quit smoking before I figure out how to use this damn lighter. And I put it back. And the guy in front of me, 
about my age, maybe a little younger, short haired, dressed fairly well, nice, you know, like business, like a nice guy. But he's buying two bottles of wine. <laughs> he's lecturing me about smoking in line. And I kept my mouth. I didn't say anything to him. I, except for, yeah, you're probably right. But, you know, I'm so old now. I don't really give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Not to mention the secret ingredient that fights cancer is called baking soda. And Larry Woods got me hooked on baking soda. I'll always remember that about Larry. Larry bragged about it and said, da 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 da. It's got uh, medicinal properties and this. He alluded to a lot of things that I followed up on on my own and looked for and found answers to that suited me. And I'm sure if I would have looked for the negative side instead, I would have found that honesty. See? But luckily for me, my, my gears are, are tuned into this certain path that I'm on. And. I don't know. I might have made mistakes along the way, but I don't recognize them as such. You know, just shit happens, and you can either um, spend your time valuing it, you know, on a little scale all you, all day and all night. You're just wasting more time judging something that's over. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. So, we coming back to honesty. I know I'm probably all over the road tonight. Let me... Let me stoke up my little my little corn cob and indulge my lungs one more time for my friends and foes out there in Radio Land. Yeah, bit shoot and Spreaker. We got a little crowd on Spreaker. Grimner and uh uh Mary are over on Bit Shoot. And they got a little bit of a crowd over there too. They they do better with people than I do. But even I consider myself like a, you got, it. it's a taste. You, you either acquire a taste for sarcasm or you don't. And among the sarcasm is so much more truth than most people will give you. <laughs> Just I like to play the word games, you know, like, like Vinny, only different. Vinny actually, uh, he's trying to leave something behind that's true about a, a serious situation that took place in American history, and I think that's a big fucking deal. It's kind of cool to, to be buddies and joke around with him the way I do, because on the other hand, he, he's trying to accomplish something so serious in life, and me, nah, I, I don't try to accomplish nothing. nothing so oh, I did come up with a plan today. Me and Cirque were looking through the puzzles. And I've been doing things like this my whole life small detaily little uh, repetitive things this is keep my brain just cooking so i finished that map puzzle i wanted to finish and i got that done so i started another one and we were going through the computer day and she actually found and then this is going to be like a year project a 40 plus thousand piece puzzle and it's eight frames, I believe. It was eight eight individual frames, or it might have been ten, of Disney um, squares. But the size of it is like, uh, I think it was like not six meters across. If, if I do this, I'm gaming for next year. Sometime next year, I'm going to get this and uh, try to accomplish it. I'm going to install, the plan is to install it on the ceiling with some kind of magnet setup. So, that's a good, good uh, that'll keep me busy for, <laughs> for a while. And it comes in pieces of about the size of the table that I'm already using to do the, the ones I'm doing at four, 3,000. So, I'll be working again, you know, 4,000, 4, 5,000 pieces at a time. <laughs> Holy shit. But, <laughs> hey, Vinny's being all cool. Yeah, because, you know, uh, people do shit for each other when they're friends, you know, and it's not what you say that matters. It, it, that does help. It, it helps not to be an asshole to each other, but sometimes uh, things go on beyond the Internet that people don't talk about. And some of us, you know, coexist in the world in physical, like Mental did. Mental came and visited us. Long time ago, he was a guest in Denmark. And last week, he mentioned it, and I thought it was—I thought he just wanted to keep it private. 
but he he did talk about you know he said he was here and yeah he's a excellent guest and he was uh not feeling so well so he came to to chill out for about a, i don't know was it about a week or 10 days it wasn't here very long short stay didn't get to take him to freetown or go smoke up any or drink up any or nothing but he went back home and he seems to be much better now than he was when he was uh, in that period because he got ill now i too got ill but my illness was uh, doctor induced they took advantage of a symptom of a, of a disease i was showing at the time and convinced me i was ill when i truly wasn't but eh, people are being all nice i get all squishy start getting weepy now it, honestly i don't think i get all weepy i just probably uh brag about it and go hey look at how cool i am ah. And uh, on the show today, hmm. anyway, so, yeah, I, I'm always, everybody's happy to see each other when they're decent to each other, Beetle. That's the whole point of this, this you know, life experience for some of us, not everybody, so it's segregated, but we're, we're taught to all unify it. That, that's where the bullshit comes in is, no, reality dictates you join up with people who are like you. And that's what you surround yourself with is people who are like you, not people that are different. You're going to marry somebody that's so fucking beyond what you can handle that they drive you insane. You're actually, you're looking for somebody that's like yourself, only in the opposite sex. That's how I look at that. That's my honest version of it. Because as, as much of a difference, like, socially as there is between me and Cirque, like, she's the happy, nice one. And I'm the grouch. But I don't think that people that encounter me say that. It's the internet world. Because I say, fuck. <laughs> because I tell people the truth about what I think. And if I change my mind, I think, hey. I've evolved beyond that thought. Now I've got something else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can always come back to Denmark, Cakes. Me and Cirque ain't going anywhere. We love this little old beat-up house, and it takes care of us, and we just take care of it back. Now, last year, she got real uh, excited growing some cucumbers. So every year we grow a little bit of vegetables in the backyard, and every year she gets a little more... I want to do this next time. I want to do a little bit more. And she's even starts to plan ahead. So, you know, because Cirque's very, um, when it comes to stuff like that, she doesn't plan. That That's incidental. But when she's doing it, then it's another story. Oh, the thing needs water and it needs this and it needs to be that. And all the details of after the, after the fact, but starting it. No, she's like me. Just throw it in the ground and see what happens. But, there's protocols to everything. If you want something to succeed, go to somebody that did it, and they got a video up about everything. I even have a uh, avocado seed that is growing in my window, and it's the middle of December, and it's freaking cold. So I don't know how the hell it survives. And all the plants that I have in the window, I've down to water them about once a week, make sure, oh, maybe spray them every couple of days. But I give them some base water in their, in their dirt about once. And the windows, everything is green in the windows. And in fact, uh, I think that I started out, it was quite the opposite. I couldn't take care of the plants when I first started. I didn't know what the hell, I, you know didn't know that that each plant is actually different from the other plant and this plant might need a little bit of water and that might need a lot of water i've got a i even have the, my second tree cirque's family when they come to visit they bring a, a warming gift it's i guess a danish tradition and her cousins that have come over like they come over about once a year to be you know sociable come all the way out here from copenhagen and they've brought us two trees, and one of them I kept alive last year in the winter time, and put it in the yard in the springtime. And now this year they got it. Some other guy. It's kind of exotic. I'd take a picture and put it up on a realliberty.org. But it's a very exotic-looking kind of um, tree thing, plant. And 
I think I've been growing this one and it's still it's green as fuck inside this house in Denmark in December. And you know, it's just from reading uh, reading information on the internet, asking people a question, "Hey, do you know what you do with this when it does that?" And they go, "Sure, what, what you know, and they answer me and then I fix it." So everything that uh you know, I need to know about my immediate life. I can find an honest person on the internet to tell me how to fix whatever I've done wrong. What have I incorrectly applied here? That's how I got to baking soda. And, you know, Grim was adamant when he did his show, the uh, Grim Leftovers. He started it out with that. I'm still impressed with that because so few people believe that baking soda is so freaking powerful because you can go to the store and buy it for a dollar or whatever. It's cheap. But you go to a doctor's office and, you know, that there are drugs and, and all that stuff that actually makes the illness ten times worse than however it already is. It doesn't fix anything. But we have so many indoctrinated voters and people in religion and education and hospitals and all this crap and they're just taught what they're taught to follow the protocols to get them to where they want to take you. And they don't really, I don't think they really all understand the truth about every fucking detail of the truth because there's so many lies. Hmm. I am doing an internet show, Beetle. What? Beetle's losing his mind. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the reallibertymedia.com chat. I was giving old dirt cake some uh, attention there about visiting. Yeah, you always got a home in Denmark, yeah. That's absolutely no problem there. But uh, people, I don't know, people are afraid to do the things that we take for granted. You know, if you're comfortable where you're at, enjoy it. If you're something's wrong with where you at, leave it. Get the fuck out. Go somewhere where you're comfortable because, you know, you're the one that matters. I'm not one of those people that looks at everybody else and thinks how much they matter. You matter to me when I'm getting resources, you know, electricity, because it comes from other people. Or information, other people. <laughs> Food, uh, name it, anything. But Cirque is Cirque. And there you go. I don't know if that made any sense to anybody, but hmm. it actually made an incredible amount of sense to me. Because I can make any anything I want to see in life. is All I have to do is decide it, and there it is. And if I want proof to back up my illusion, all I got to do is open a link, and I'm, there it is. doesn't matter what side of the illusion I'm on. doesn't matter what level or year, however you measure the illusion. It is still going to always have the upper hand because it's going to give you the answer that you're looking for. And, hey, the cat came down to pester me. Oh, hello, Mr. Cat. He want, he comes and rubs against me when he wants milk. He thinks he's uh, sneaky. But, you know, at least they're quiet. And they, all they, this one does is he purrs like a, uh, like a 57 Chevy. You know, you can hear him idling. <laughs> Uh, me and my buddy used to drive this Malibu. It belonged to him, but he let me drive it a lot. So, uh, and, and uh, it was just a beat up old. The body was just crap, but it had a, a like some fancy schmancy uh, racing engine under the hood. But they deliberately shot out the body of the car before he bought it. <laughs> anyway, long story. His Malibu was quick. There you go, the end. But it sounded, it made me think of the cat parent. Oh, why would you want, I don't want money. You know what? If anything, if, yeah, let me do a little uh, bag in here at the holiday times. If you guys got uh, any, like, close friends, you want to, you know, buy them some Christ Christmassy kind of, goo, you know, gag gifts, stocking stuff for things. I don't know, a cup, a coffee mug from the RLM, or a t-shirt, or maybe a, a Magtow hat, or whatever he's fucking selling, Grimner. Grimner's got um, stuff for sale on his site. And I'm not all about the commerce, and you know, I don't do this very good anymore. I don't do the advertising for the Grimner. But hey, dig deep, man. It's, you know, 
that all that cash that you're holding back, saving for your end of your life, you could give it to Grimm to spend now. <laughs> Look at the bright side. Hey, make a man's day. Because, hey, give a man a fish and, you know, you fed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you'll know where he's at on the weekends. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people like to fish. A lot of women like to fish, too. I, I think that's helped fishing, that women like to fish. You know why? Because women's got boobs. And when women's fish, you know what you get to see? Boobs. Ah, the world is such a wonderful place when you put it in perspective like that, isn't it? Anyway. Uh, eh, I'm not a fisherman myself, honestly. I think I went once and went through all the rigmarole and the line and the baiting. And I didn't like it. I was like 12. Eh, this doesn't do it for me. No, ain't going to happen. But other people love the fishing so much. And then the best part about it is they cook the fish that they fucking caught. And they eat it. And that is the thing that I like about it. You know, to be honest, because I just, I don't know. I guess I, I've lost my interest in uh, killing things to eat them. I did it. Uh, it wasn't all that exciting. It wasn't like, oh, hey, man, I want to go to a slaughterhouse and do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> it was like, wow, that was a drag. I hope I don't want to ever do this again. And there, there's a point in it when you're slaughtering animals that, I, for me, I just, I started to wonder, uh, wonder what people feel like, you know, just the thought of that, you know, doing this to an animal is one thing. I wonder if I did this to a human and wonder without, and I said, nope, that's the end of this shit. I'm done. <laughs> Cause I, the questions were in my mind innocent until I went, Hey, whoa, maybe no, that's too much. And I think that movies and television have softened that side of me that is anti-violence just enough over my, you know, my first 15, 20 years to uh, get me to ask that question. Uh, oh, yeah, Vinny wants to come on to the program. Let me, whoops, I almost opened up my game. Let me open up wire. Vinny wants to come on to the Dork Table podcast and argue with me about the color blue. Yeah, you come on when you want, Vinny. I'll, I hope I'll hear you. If I don't, tell me, remind me that you did it. But I, I opened up my wire for my buddy Vincenzo. And, um, well, I, my wife chose honesty. See, there it's all so subjective because uh, I was at the bar, the bar I like in town, a couple of, I don't know, a couple of months back during like June or July. And, the bartender is very honest and open and she's very down to earth about politics and religion, but not medicine. Uh, something came up. She was talking about, oh, so-and-so's got cancer. And I said, yeah, well, baking soda can fix that. And she gave me the dirtiest look I ever, you know, from her that I'd gotten. But I'd seen her give that look to other people, so I knew what it meant. And I went, okay, enough for this conversation. We will skip the baking soda portion of your education and let you live in uh, doctorhood land. You know, where the medical people who are so fucking qualified to fix you don't fucking... The only fixing that doctors ever do is the surgeons. And a lot of them are in it boobs. But human beings are not all, you know, we're not all exactly the same. Maybe on the inside you can, but still, then you got, um, yeah, I'm hanging in here. I'll see you come on or something, Vince. But I'm not a butcher either, so I'm talking out of my, you know, I'm, I'm talking out of my imagination for a minute. And I'm just imagining that inside of each of us, even though the organs look alike and they're all the same, they're, they're not, to the eye, they're not like a duplicate of each other. It'd be like a, a parking lot, you know. They're all cars, but, you know, that's a Chevy and that's a Ford and that's a Datsun. And each car to the car enthusiast has got a name and a title and a year and all this kind of identifying crap 
But to a layman that doesn't know one car from the other, what would it look like? So to me, you open up a human body, I'm just going to see whatever the hell, the pictures in, that I've seen in the past, and I'm going to try to connect that to what I'm looking at at the moment. And so I never got involved. <laughs> it's too much. Uh, don't have an interest that's deep-rooted enough in that to carry it to the end of my life. But understanding things that I don't do sometimes is interesting to me, like the uh, like the murder shows on television. Oh, the Hannibal Lecters, and they all say the same thing. And we based it off Ed Gein. Okay, Ed Gein may have been the only one, you know. And all these other people, they actually they just created them. And the reason I think things like this for all you anti-conspiracy folk out there. There was a, a Kennedy relative, what was his name, Skakel, I think, Skakel. Anyway, he supposedly, I think back in the late 60s or 70s, early 70s, he beat a girl to death with a golf club on his parents' property or their, or the girl's parents' property or something. They, they had some kind of a relationship, him and the girl, and whatever happened, it went south and she ends up dead. And they spent 30 years or so trying this freaking Skakel guy because he was a Kennedy. He had plenty of money to fight it. And and there you go, 30 years, probably enough. And just like a death sentence, you know, eh, they give you death row, 30 years, that's enough. They let you out or they kill you. <laughs> and the same thing, this guy had 30 years of being free and fighting this murder charge. And then they said, well, your time's up. Now you're going to do the time. And he's a Kennedy. So, mm. It leads me to wonder if a lot of the shit that's gone on that was made public through the massive news media that's owned by the same fucking people in the first place, and you only hear what they want you to know, maybe the some of the murders that people were charged with were actually murders done by other people that didn't get charged with them. <laughs> Kennedy got out of it. He drowned a, he drowned a hooker. <laughs> God. Wow, what's that other guy? Said the Green River Killer, he was like competing with Ted Kennedy and when they caught up to him they went, Hey, Ted can do it, but you can't. Well, wait a minute, but Ted only did it once. You did it like thirty times. Well, maybe it wasn't this Green River Killer guy at all. Cause there's another serial killer guy that got famous by knowing the places all these bodies were buried and this, that, and the other, and claiming to be the killer that killed him, but he really wasn't. And I, what was his name? Henry Lee, Henry Lee something, uh, if I can remember it later. But he was real famous. Probably all the dorks and the the uh, nerds on the RLM would probably remember his name. But it was Henry Lee something, and he was out of Texas. And he got real famous for confessing to these killings. He was like the most famous. He wanted to be the most famous, but he was a fraud. <laughs> and then, then you wonder, if a man is willing to... Uh, okay, Vinny. Uh, if a guy is willing to uh, commit murder, I guess lying about committing murder wouldn't be much of a stretch, would it? Okay, but where are you? Vin, there you are, Vinny. And I'm going to call the Vincent man right now it says it's ringing I don't hear it wait a minute I love the drum beat. uh oh there it is okay yeah well I had my I forgot to put my headset on because I can hear through the whether I do it with only when I do it with other people do I need the you know exactly app, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't plan on having anybody on today, Mister. Can you hear me now? Yeah, but I, I'm not, I'm not adverse to you showing up and saying, "Hey, can I come on?" Henry Lee Lucas, thanks, Grimner. But uh, no, I'm, I'm open. For, it's a dork table. I don't take any of this shit too damn seriously. It's just if I think I'm going to do it alone, I try to do a decent, you know, decent show. Not, you know, but if I get somebody on it, it makes it looser, so I can play around and do voices and act like. Act like a twelve-year-old. Yeah, that's good to have a, a what a wall to bounce things off. Of well, the what what about honesty struck you to to call in, or do you have a different topic? Oh, I thought I'd play into it with you, but uh, uh, I was just having fun with uh, and putting some uh, some mental notes here. 
together for like little ideas of what you're talking about through here and, and had fun with it. I, I'll just yeah, copy, yeah. And, I'll copy and paste it so you can see it. Oh, well, yeah. let's see. Dark it's Case a, is posted too. Everybody's getting on the dark table today to have the fun. I, and I got a phone a call. I'm probably uh -oh. going to probably see? be. Hold on, I'm a, uh, Yeah, get off this one, and I'll call you back. Hold on, yeah, hang yeah, me up. Hang up, yeah, bye. Hang me right, up, bye. Hanging up, yeah, bye. Anyway, wow, train wreck of the week goes to the Dork Table Podcast, because we're in competition with everybody else. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not too concerned about, you know leaving a memory and all that crap but if people are listening and they're interested in in something out of the normal what's different than what i was told you know because i believe that let's here look at the the main feed kate the first one that comes up and me and miss kate are uh we get along we don't agree on every freaking topic. But when we don't agree with each other, there's no attack about, oh, what a fucking stupid thing to say, Kate. What do you talk like that for? But we get that from some people. And I give that to some people. Hansel. Mostly. Okay, Hansel. But I feel justified. This is like two and a half years. I mean, it's not like the, I just met him the other day and I slap him around every time I see him. No, this is years of abuse from the guy to bring me, and this is my opinion, to bring me to the argument level because, you know, he's so adamant about whatever the hell, I don't know, Magtow and all that stupid new shit that people think is so different today than it ever was before. They used to just call them fags. Now they call them Magtows. Um, wow, life without women. If I didn't have a woman to, to in my life, I would be kind of bored. That's kind of a boring existence. Uh, okay, no problem, Vinny. I can do this with my eyes closed. But I don't know. Beetle's laughing. <laughs> but I, I don't think that... So, oh, what I was saying about Kate. I don't think that socially... We would recognize each other in public, physically, the way we recognize each other on the internet, mentally. I think the physical would, would throw off any concept of what's beyond what you see because of our indoctrinations. And we all have them. Just if, yeah, my indoctrination will kick the shit out of your indoctrination any day. It's tough. It's strong. Hey, Cowboy Tech just showed up. How you doing, CT? I hope you're out there on the radio listening thing. But if you're not, I said hey. <laughs> like, uh, like I don't. I, I, he's one of my particular favorites. Uh, Cowboy Tech puts up the most um, helpful to me out of everybody else. Sorry, guys, but I've decided that he's my favorite person to go to for links about finance and society that actually have a, a meaning to it and there's other people like myself i post a lot of crap just for fun entertainment cowboy tech not so much very serious uh, good information and it's nice to have somebody around like that that you you know like a rock and i don't mean it in a bad way i mean it that you're you know you're consistent in your information and me, I'm a joker and a clown, so I don't expect a lot of return back. I'm just amazed I'm still in the game at all. But uh, 59 years old, accounting people, I'm going to be a senior citizen in two more years. <laughs> or is it three? I, freak, I don't remember. <laughs> They'll come up with some number. Uh, Chloe is saying hi to the mental pancakes. You know, and for the people that get beyond all the uh, religion and the politics and all that horseshit that keeps us separated and does such a wonderful job of it, uh, the separation is so, it's so well uh, installed, you know, it's, it's like a fucking vital, uh, what do you call them, a vital organ in your psyche to belong to a bigger group, you know. If you don't belong to the group that's winning, 
well then who's gonna protect you when you get in trouble and uh all the times i remember that emotion of feeling i'm in trouble i looked like the government that was the ones that were enforcing the trouble that i was in and in my opinion I was, you know, just a kid, fuck most of it, teenager at the best. And the the crap that they're wasting their time on me with was so incidental. They could have been out there, you know, saving people or I don't putting buildings out on fire or something important and they get they were fucking around bothering a, a 12 or a 13 year old. But That's my version of it, and maybe it was the timing of everything that ever happened in my whole history, of all of it, one thing after the other, that put me where I'm at at this very moment right now to do what I'm doing at the at the moment. And oh, how do you remember all that shit? Usually I'm just living and doing stuff, and I don't have the capacity and the wherewithal constantly to put life in its proper fucking perspective. It's my life and if i'm not enjoying my life well i must be doing something fucking wrong now what we're taught is you're irritating me so you're making me feel bad or something to that effect i got a link sore (laughs) it's good to be the king of flash mania (laughs) so yeah the the queen just brought me some tea Uh, that's so cool and I didn't even beg for it this time. And it's on the hour and she just comes up. See, when you're, even me, I mean, as not nice as I can be, I must be nice because I draw all this nice from nice people. Nice people are very nice to me. Now, the not nice people that I play with, um, they're not nice to me. They're very not nice to me. And that's the point. You know, that's the goal of that. The intention of all that is is for the similarities to show, not for opposites. That's a bunch of crap. So I have this, um, honestly, I just like fucking with people that act stupid. And it's a terrible thing to do in a public situation. If I did it in a bar... People would always, t- come on, leave that guy alone. Will you stop fucking picking on him all the time? But it was so much fun to rile up the idiot and watch him squirt, you know? Ah, uh, you need a flashlight, sir. Uh-oh, somebody needs a flashlight. That comes from Beetle. I think he's talking to Woody. But anyway, honesty is indeed the best policy but here we go with the, another question is if you're dealing with an inhonest, uh, inhonest, making up words, with a dishonest world, then how can you ever possibly come up with a response or an answer or an idea or whatever you're looking for that's not also dishonest? If that's the basis of the foundation, that's what you're going to have no matter how you look at it. And I find that's the result of where I'm at now is I look and see, wow, <clears throat> the way you think today is a result of all the crap that you believe. You, as well as me, I'm the result of all the crap I believe. And I look at other people and ex- and that's how my mind deciphers what I'm looking at. Oh, you, you're the end result of all the things that you truly believe and you express them through to other people verbally on or in print on the internet site or in person through your your attire and your demeanor as you saunter through the crowd. And everybody is so unaware of how incidental they are. <laughs> I think I'm pretty clear on it. But except for the immediate, say, 50 feet around you in a circle around you. Of about 50 feet. That's where you matter. Outside of that 50 feet, the rest of the world don't even fucking know you're there. (laughs) And sometimes, it doesn't even need 50 feet. Five feet, and that's it. The world doesn't exist to me outside of that five foot span because I'm doing something. And then I interact with somebody else, but it's not even an inner. I pass them with plenty of room to spare 
they don't interfere with my stream. I'm not interfering with their stream. So I've still got that five feet to my, you know, in my mind. Now sometimes it can get really small and you only got two inches. But it's still, it's like a barrier between me and everybody else. And when people get too close to my uh, inner sanctum, <laughs> I think they know it. And, and then there's people like Hansel and Type, you know, the character he plays on the Real Liberty Media that inspire that outrage. And, you know, they try to say the most disgusting things they can to rile somebody that's sensitive so they get pissed off. Well, apparently I'm a lot more sensitive than I ever dreamed humanly possible. Because, uh, yeah, when Hansel goes on to bitching about, like, countries and people and all that, I feel insulted. Uh, maybe it's not ins What is Because we're doing the honesty thing, and I pick on the poor guy all the fucking time. I, I should at least take a minute to explain my side of this so people aren't in the dark, you know? And it's not me. I don't care what he says about me. I am a pothead. So what? Oh, what uh, What else does he say? Oh, I'm a, a drain on the system. No, I'm not, I'm not on no system. Mister, <coughs> Mister, I don't need no system. <laughs> but this is coming from a guy that claims on the Internet, we don't know if it's true or not, but that he lives on this very system that he doesn't want other people to live on unless they do the things that he wants them to do, but the system that he operates under says, these people can do fuck all and get all these goodies, and that's the way it is. If you don't like it, cry. There's nothing you can do to change that, except complain. Wow. So, in my opinion, I'm looking at the system and thinking, well, the system created the problem for the people that have the problem. Once upon a time, we weren't overcrowded in these freaking cities and forced to compete with each other for not enough work like they do. This is a, this is the scam of scams. It's so unbelievable that when you tell people this side of the, the equation, they always tell you, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist and everybody's out to get you. Well, I ask in return then will you explain why is there fluoride in the water? If they're not out to get us, if, if they're not the enemy of us, why is there legally amounts of fluoride in your drinking water, in your makeup, in your freaking toothpaste? And if you should ingest any of this crap, I don't know why, but they say, if you swallow toothpaste, call 911 and da 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 do all this and do all that. But wait a minute, you can buy this in the store, but you can't grow weed. <laughs> what are you going to do with weed that is so fucking dangerous that it compares to something like toothpaste? Because the results of that kind of kill are so slow. They take so long. It takes it takes a lifetime of, of it to get you to the, the point of deterioration that you may or may not be at to accomplish killing off your third eye. And, and the people that didn't work on are the ones that are called weirdos. Oh, you're a weirdo. You talk like a nut job. I believe that the people that talk like the state are the ones that are the victims of the shit that I'm against. And I don't know, maybe it doesn't affect your ability to, say, be educated. Oh, you can learn and repeat anything. You're still a victim of the fluoride because the eye it was trying to kill was not the eye that, re that repeats what it's told. It's the eye that questions in any fucking way what it's told. Because I grew up with the Iron Fist. My father's thing was, hey, I said so, motherfucker. You better get doing it. There was no baby please about it. There was he said. And I grew up with a world around me thinking that's how the fucking world worked. Because I was a child. And when I went out and found out that, no, he was a tyrant. That other people like to be free. Oh, that's a whole new world. I was about nine years old. And here, I'll explain it with the, the story. This is what happened. It was, uh, I was nine years old, 
And until I was nine, I was a bookworm. I carried books everywhere. I had books in places. I was reading, 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 reading. And one day in the summertime, my mom says, you got to get out of the house. You can't sit in here. And all you do is go to the swim pool. And you, you only go when your dad takes. You never go one by yourself. So she kind of instilled that <laughs> that bone, whatever it was, because I was such a completely absorbed child. Whatever I was doing had my full attention. Didn't matter what it was. It mattered that it had my attention. And my mom opened up this door to get on your bike and go to Santa Fe Springs, go to the swimming pool. And I did it once, and I was hooked. Man, that freedom thing, that riding alone, you know, with all the cars and everything, all the grown-ups are out there. And then I found myself with a problem. And that problem was the um, swimming pool cost money to go to. So, you know, my mom would, my mom was always generous with money. But to the point of, hey, maybe I want something to eat after I'm swimming, she would say, just come home and eat. Me, I was starving when I got out of the swimming pool, get my bike, ride a half a mile to the place that you could get food. And not have any money was a drag. And this is at nine years old. And what I did was I asked the bakery next to the hamburger stand if they would give me a job <laughs> doing anything in the place, you know, clean up or something. And they what they hired me to do was to unload the bakery delivery for, I guess it was like a dollar or something. But with that dollar at that time, I could go next door to the hamburger stand and get a hamburger and fries and a Coke. So that was my, you know, when I was nine years old, that was my thing. And my mom started that by throwing me out the house to go be like other kids. <laughs> so from the very first fucking time I did it, leaving out, I was still to the swimming pool on my bike alone, alone. When I got to the swimming, I wasn't one of those people that sat around the swim pool yakking I was in the swimming pool or I was diving off the board for half an hour, something like that. Just busy, 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 busy. And now <laughs> I'm planning to go back to the pool. I don't know if I can, I doubt I could keep up the, the pace I had 40 years ago. That's insanity. But I've not even asked Cirque if she even knows how to swim. Some people don't. I never knew that until I was an adult that everybody didn't know how to swim. I was one of those dummies that thought if I could do it, anybody could do it. Didn't didn't really strike me to ever ask, hey, can you swim? All the people I was around were all at a swimming pool. So it was kind of ridiculous to even bring it up. And then when I got away from water, I'd met people that have never been in water. No, don't go to rivers. Don't go to lakes. No, it's only water I'll go into is a bathtub. <laughs> I want to use a shower because I don't want to drown. I went, wow. Anyway, so enough about that, but uh-oh, Woody is getting all weird with somebody. Uh-oh. I don't even want to repeat it. He's ta telling tales to the dork cakes and everybody else on the chat, and he's getting all talkative. So anyway, Vinny came on and said he was going to banter with me about the honesty thing, and I went off on some childhood memories and um, things just aren't today what we are told that and that's to me so obvious how can you not see that everything about your you know physical life whatever that may entail it's all based on crap we don't have any foundations that aren't garbage politics please i was making a joke with cirque years ago about paul mccartney is starting to look like angela merkel even went to the dork table a couple of times and said, you know, I think that Paul McCartney is actually Angela Merkel. I think they're the same person. <laughs> and there's there, one of them ain't really there. I wonder which one it is. <laughs> wow. Vinny, not Vinny, but Beetle and Woody are going crazy on the chat. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. So enough about the Merkel McCartney uh, extravaganza, but they sure look alike. And I was so disappointed when I found out the real Paul did die. I went, yeah, but who is this other guy? And he's a much better musician. Maybe that's why Cirque, I think Cirque said that when I, I said, maybe they, uh, I said, 
he's much better than the original. And she says, maybe that's why they killed him. And I, I never thought of that. But wow, what a business. This entertainment shit that we... Uh, I don't know what to make of it anymore. So, eh, I gave up. I gave up on anything that comes from... Uh, what do you call it? Any mass media. If I haven't already known it my whole life, I'm not going to learn it now. I have officially... Pulled out of the I give a shit game. Don't give two flying fucks who's popular or who's famous. Jeez, those are even worse. I was watching an old video of uh, Molly Hatchet before the show today. And it just kind of struck me about these kids were just jumping around the stage like a bunch of redneck dicks playing these fucking guitars. Boom, 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 boom. And then I watch a Clapton link, and Clapton just stands still like a statue. And he works uh, 90% less as far as putting out. And he gets a, a thousand times more return from the music he makes just by being whatever he is. <laughs> not not entertaining any fucking buddy but himself. Of course, that's, that's the way I, I recognize what he's doing. Other people might have a different opinion that's the beauty of life you know not mixed together and then everybody's got to agree no 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 what it is is i see it like this and you see it like that and to learn how to appreciate the other opinion not to belittle the other opinion and i've yet to step into not belittling the other opinion when it is completely absurd but my goal in life, you know, to eventually get to some age maybe or whatever it is where I just get tired of uh, the petty uh, little games like uh, the Han Hannibal Lecter games, the petty tortures and the nonsense. But for some reason, that seems to, s to fit the game that we play. So the only other choice is ignore. And I do it, so I'll stay quiet and stay out of that stupid shit. But then after a while, my honesty side, you know, I, I want to know what the fuck is going on. I want to be able to read it all. And I always end up regretting the decision because nothing changes. Eh, you know what I want to do? I want to change into whatever I'm supposed to be today. <laughs> I don't know what that meant, but it sounded kind of clinical clinical like i could be like a doctor say a bunch of fucking shit that doesn't really make any sense but it's so confusing that the person listening nods their head through it and oh yeah the, you know like the mechanic well madam what you need here is a new muffler bearing and your car will run just perfect i guarantee and they're just assuming that most females don't know there's no such thing as a muffler bearing <laughs> but it sounds, you know, to a non-mechanical mind, I'm sure it would sound, yeah, hey, okay, what what does it do? <laughs> and see, now we have, what, what, this is kind of the problem. We have verifiable research. So, if your goal is to prove what you already know is true, and what you know is a bunch of bullshit, wow. See, that's the the side of me that uh, I don't know what to do with it because you can't help people. And when people are so indoctrinated into what they believe that they believe the lie and defend it and call the truth a lie, where do you go with that? I mean, you kind of it's not a defensible position to be in. Mm. Uh, but... <clears throat> I think that, you know, the combat, the word combat, a lot of people seem to live for it. I used to. I think I still do at times, you know, where it comes to the surface and it dominates. But, nah, I really, the last couple of months I've noticed that I get more pleasure, actually, out of the time I spend either doing a radio podcast or doing a puzzle than I do out of the uh, chitter-chatter. You know, the the bantering and the complaining and the arguing. No, if you're going to argue, get on the damn show with me like Moose did and tell me that. Eh, no, I don't agree with you. 
and because you know what she don't have to agree with me i just think this and you know that's the way we are that's the, the part about being alive is you you've got freedom to see things however the fuck you want to but the other side is you got the the ability to go out there in the world even only if it's electronic through a voice and, and point your point of view out there and let people know what it is and you never know you might influence somebody else's opinion and it could be go either way you're totally insane i wouldn't believe that for you know if my life depended on it to wow i never looked at it from that side before maybe i'll give this a poke and that's how uh, people look at say the death by medicine video scott i'm not real popular over on minds.com at all but I have got a few pokes at that particular link. And I left them at the top of my page. That and the straw man. And they've both acquired over 100 hits. So, you know, that's I'm small. I don't want to be like uh, Mary was talking the other day about being on Twitter. And she gets so many people following her. And I don't think that the, 100, the plus 100 actually saw the whole video. I'm counting on 10%. But if 10% saw that whole fucking video and even got got through it, that's that's a start. Because the reality is so different than the story that we're told, you know. But, but it seems possible, you know. We have a just enough of that government education in us to understand the story, that the, the lie that's told to you. You have to understand it somehow, or it would be so obvious that maybe that's where I'm at, is that the story that I'm told, if it rubs me in a, in a fashion where I can't understand how that could have happened, then my mind says, you're lying, period. We went to the moon. How did you do that? Okay, we went to the moon, and we walked on the moon, and then we got back in our moon unit, and then we flew home. Okay, how did you do that? Well, we lost all the technology. But we kept a film <laughs> of the trip <laughs> for your perusal, but no proof, you know. No, but in 1969, they had more freaking technology back then than we have today. <laughs> and that's what they're trying to sell everybody, you know. And in some circles of that you know, around the world uh, NASA game, there are people that are claiming uh, NASA did go to the moon, and there are people that claim NASA didn't go to the moon. So you get both stories from the same source. So it doesn't matter what side you're on. Pick a side, any side. And if you've picked the side that believes that the government is willing to lie to you, to keep you in tune, then you get it. That's the decision I've made about all this. When I hit that plateau of wherever level of it it is, that, wow, these people, I think I was watching George Carlin. It really opened my eyes up to, you know, because my parents told me and everybody, all the reality around me showed me it was true. But when Carlin was actually saying on HBO, don't, I don't believe anything the government fucking tells me. Not a word. That got me. I really started to take it more serious. I think I was in my 30s by that point, though. And I started to take it more serious, but the people who I live among didn't. They thought he was a comedian. I thought he was a preacher. He was giving us an instruction manual on how to deal with government and religion and education right there on HBO and making money doing it. So he was he was winning all around. But he made the fatal mistake of going to Congress and doing exactly what he did on stage to Congress. And he said, I'm 75. He outlived his wife. This is a pretty sad part of it. But he said, I'm 75. I ought to be around another 20, 25 years. And within a couple years of that comment, he died of a heart attack. So here we go with my, you know, my thing is, wow, how did he get in such bad physical shape after all that? He quit doing drugs. He quit this. He quit that. He lost his wife. He makes a statement like that, and then he dies within a short period of time of a heart attack. 
wow, that's kind of weird. You'd think he would have not died of a heart attack because he would be taking care of himself to prepare for the following 20 years. So, because I think like that, my mind says, well, I wonder who killed him. And then I further, I go further with it and say, oh, look at all the shit he said to Congress. And then I read links about, oh, this shot will uh, duplicate the results of a heart attack. The CIA uses it. <laughs> so whether that's true or not, does that matter at that point? Honesty? <laughs> I mean, I read it. Okay? Just like everybody else that read it. So b reading it does something to the mind, like Rob said. The wavelengths, you know, the brain wavelengths. He, he's, I got to get him back on the show to talk about that again sometime. But then in my mind, if you write about something and it's a really obscure concept, I think the dork table is probably the appropriate place to give it some conversation. Because you're not going to be hearing about brainwaves on your freaking Fox News or your CNN. or But there's some good speakers that, you know, have an opinion about what's going on. and But that's, to me, that's all it is. The stuff that they're talking about interests them. And I like to listen to them, but I don't seem to devote it to memory. Whatever... Whatever the topic is at the time, and it's usually political or social, some some social form. Uh, David Icke, or some people go too far. You know, they they start out at one place, and then they end up, you know, defining their alien probe to you in graphic detail. And whether it's true or not doesn't interest me. It's the the public is only you know comfortable with so much, and it, and a lot of people think I go too far. And all I think about, or think, all I seem to think I speak about are the the way I interpret the expressions of physical society on me and how I see it affects you. Now, that's my, my opinion of what I'm looking at, which is probably fair. You know, to have a, an opinion about a verbal thing that doesn't matter, like Trump's the president, that's not worth the freaking time it took to speak it. Yet, it's a good example of how ridiculous the language is used. The things that matter we don't talk about, and the things that don't matter have our attention. That's, that's life. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe that baking soda cures cancer, I would, um, well, that's not the market. It would be the opposite. If you do believe it, and you know what I know, go to somebody else and tell them that and see how... You, that you just grew a dick in them right out of the middle of your forehead. You can see them visually seeing it grow poking right out of your skin. And by the time you're done saying baking soda, you have this nine inch dick popped right out of your forehead and they've lo you've lost them. They're completely gone. Whatever the whatever the uh, the vibration that, that that moment brings to the conversation works against the person trying to help the victim and the victim in time in turn gives you a disappointing kind of wow you know and then all this crap that i've been hearing for years about uh well they're legalizing hemp or cannabis now see oh look now you can get cbd oil all right all right all right i know that cbd oil comes from the cannabis plant but that's got fuck all to do with smoking pot. This is what I've been saying. Well, I didn't know what I've been saying. I was miss saying it because it was never getting through to anybody else. Still hasn't. But I'm going to try it again with this explanation, right? Because using CBD oil is not a product of smoking weed, okay? Then how can you compare the two? Yet we do. And that, that somehow, if you can make the divide between smoking pot gives you this reaction and CBD oil, a product of cannabis, will do this for you, but you won't get high on it. So how the two are put together is this more dishonesty and mis misdirection, uh, the representation from the state, you know. 
into this plant and its properties are so overwhelming and yet they put fluoride in the freaking drinking water and the and the you know f- face makeup and toothpaste and on the marketing thing they're telling you this shit's good for you when you can look up on any internet site what it is and find out is quite the opposite it's it's a waste product from chemical manufacturing so they found a way to feed us back the crap that they can't use. And it, like we're some kind of laboratory fucking experiment. And what I learned in my life, it the, the amount of control from country to country either tightens or loosens depending on what country that you want to be in. So these bastards have have us all conned with all these boundaries and organizations and countries and religions anything to get you as a human life form to be a part of their machine and if you choose not to play in their machine (laughs) you'd be running around with you know uh, I guess covered in in bear skin fighting bears for you know for rabbits to wipe your ass with shit like that there wouldn't be much other, there's no other opportunity. I mean, it, anywhere that you try to build something, the system jumps all over it. And they want uh, licenses, and they've got guidelines and regulations and this, that, and the other. I've read such disgusting shit that a, a, a family man had a wife and children, builds the kids' damn playhouse thing in the backyard, but the city makes them take it down. And at that point, why is of no significance? The city made him take it down. He took it down. Now, he put it up, but the city, da-da, da-da, government, control, all the freaking things that I'm basically against because when they want something, it's usually to hurt somebody else. It's never for anybody's good. It always has a negative uh, application to it. They're enforcing something to earn or take or get Oh, good Lord. It makes my tumor bleed. Hey, Vinny's back again. Hmm. Maybe pull him on for the last 20. See what he says. But anyway, I don't know. It, it, I've been letting my wife pick my topic for me as a, as an experiment with the, uh, with the show to see if I could actually do a decent show without being so random and careless and, uh, having a, a topic seems to keep keep it together you know enough to do it and I don't know I would hope that the folks out there that understand the underlying uh, message in the dork table podcasts is what I see is what I see and what you see is what you see the illusion part is that we're supposed to agree and understand each other and all that horseshit when I don't really think that we have the time to do that or the the ability because we're inside ourself living a, a life. So whatever's external, you really like with Cirque, Cirque, I married Cirque, so I knew hey, I'm doing this, right? I wasn't passing somebody in a grocery line. This is the, the real shit where you 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 you're promising somebody something and they're promising you back and then you see who can live up to it. And it's pretty damn hard to do, you know, because when you're familiar with people, you tend to not be so care, so cautious in your delivery of word and deed. Me, not not her so much. Cirque's a nice, nice. Me, I go with my mood. I feel grumpy. I grumble. And poor Cirque, she's a nice guy. Speaking of honesty, but then again, she knew well before we met what I'm like. <laughs> it was no surprise. So uh, I think that people that want to you know, get out into the real world and play the game and all that kind of shit, I appreciate it more when they do it the way that Cirque does it. I guess that's, I was using her as an example of that. You know, or Moose's delivery of it is, I know what I'm fucking doing. You're not telling me what I don't know. So the delivery of the information to her slaps, you know, because that's how it sounds when people call you a debt slave. 
because I'm married to Cirque. I'm I'm a debt slave through penetration, you know, to, on the legal documents and all that. And but between me and Cirque, she knows I don't give two flying shits about the the stuff. The st- I, if anything were to happen to Cirque, I wouldn't want the stuff. I'd find ways to give it to her family and leave. I couldn't live here without her. That would be defeat the point. So life makes it so everything works just the perfect. <laughs> there's, there's nothing uh, irritating enough to, to make this not uh, successful, I guess, is the way to do it. And I think the, the reason I brought all that up was because we we just honest to each other. You know, that's how we run our life at, in our business life, in our private life. We're as honest with people as we can be without showing them the stains on the carpet. You know, it's like... Yeah, I spilled some coffee on my carpet. So, but I'm not going to show you that. But we're to her, I'll show her that. I go, oh, look what I did this morning. And I got sit on a white carpet. <laughs> but that's the kind of honesty that I'm talking about. The the kind that really matters. You know, did you do that? Oh, yeah. Or did you do that? No, but I bought this at the, at the place. Da, da, da. You know, not taking credit for other people's effort. And that's how I see the the voting mind. You know, that's why I'm so against it. They're, they're taking credit for something that, A, they have nothing to do with, and B, what they are being told is not what's happening. It's the, quite the opposite of the truth. Uh, it goes into the, the Jews holding everybody hostage and all this religious, oh, it's a freedom of religion. It's a trap so that people can manipulate you with religion be better off to live in a freaking totalitarian dictatorship where there ain't no fucking religion none zero fucking religion for anybody to follow but then you'd have some other because people uh, when they get into a group they feel the need to be herded somehow there's very few folk that just want to be left alone to do their thing their way they end up getting I did it and then I stopped I joined the group because that was where things were supposed to be going but luckily for me I learned quickly that the group was falling apart the future of the group was in dire dire need of help and it wasn't getting help it was being broken up But oddly enough, Ford Motor Company was so big globally at the time. See, globally, because they had manufacturing plants all over the fucking place. That to take a hit in a, one plant, they might be saving money because that plant might have been costing them. And they weren't making enough profit off it to make it worth keeping open. That's why they got rid of it. And what they were making in that particular plant was big cars. So when they tried to downsize those big cars, the big car drivers were so disappointed they weren't really too hot to buy these smaller versions of a car. It was like uh, the difference between a Chihuahua and a fucking Great Dane. You're going to go, I'm going to, you know, whichever side you're on, you're going to stick to to the bigger dog or the smaller dog. You're not going to adjust to the difference. The difference is going to—it's going to rub you raw. And the people that did it didn't even have the decency to do it over a period of ten years or something. They just did it overnight, and it was too much, and it destroyed the Ford. I think the Ford got the ass whipping in that deal. And a lot of people, there was a lot of Chevrolet, long, big, you know, the Impala, the Cadillac, all those big cars that GM made. But they were shrinking them down. I think they started before Ford did, and they got the, the jump on them. But they're so big, these companies, and they've accumulated so much wealth through all their subsidiaries and <coughs> business ties and connections to. Like, if you bought a car from Ford, there was a time that Ford owned all the companies that made all the components of the car you were buying. Like, the tires might be called something, but... Ford Motor Company owned that company on paper. So Ford Philco for the radio, same thing. Now, Philco was a second name, but it was a Ford product. So for all of you that I just bored to fucking death with the details of that crap, I apologize. But that, that, you know, honestly, that's how I don't think other people are aware of 
these things where they're so big they've gobbled up all the companies that create the component they're selling you so every nickel of of money that's transferred they they own all of it and the way they do this shit too then then comes the real uh illegal unethical shitty part is the bank loan that's just click click chop chop right right however they do it there's no money it's just adding some numbers to a, an accounting ledger. I call it creative accounting. My wife agrees with me. My wife is in the finance business world where she understands these things, you know, in a fashion better than I do. But I get the gist of the whole fucking thing. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to be a mechanic to hear that a car doesn't sound like it's running properly. You can be taught to identify things beyond your scope just by having a basic understanding of how something functions. You don't have to be a brain surgeon to know somebody's got a brain problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's folks out there that think I have a brain problem because my thinking process doesn't fit their, their, their gauge of what's normal. And I know Moose doesn't like it when I say normal, but average, normal, run-of-the-mill, common, you know, whatever is acceptable by the group, which is, wow, hey, okay, welcome back for getting bumped. Anyway, um, yeah, but it's all about how you say the same fucking thing that I'm saying, and it means the same damn thing. But it doesn't sound like it does because the uh, the words are, you know, they define a little differently. But when you look beyond definition and you just think about the core, what does that point of that comment, what has it got to do with anything? And Moose will be the first one to tell you these fucking people are lying. There you go. What After that, everything else is just agreeing with the other guy. Once you've accepted that you are being lied to by a liar, everything else is good. You can even deal with that liar afterward because you know, oh, I'm being fucking lied to. <laughs> Aren't you adorable? <laughs> you are just funny, funny, funny. But the truth, no, the truth is that's the shit that... Mm, I think people... And myself, that, that when we don't get angry about the truth, but we're very stubborn about the truth, and we can define the truth, and the and in the sense of the money is fake because it has no value, and well, we trade with it. No, you can buy stuff with it. Well, that's because we're in an agreed illusion that allows that to happen. If the supply lines slow down or stop at any given time, for anything, then you're going to see the results of all the work that's gone into the last, since about the 1900s, to get us to where we are now. And right now, and I don't think it's the, it's the physical, they're not trying to lock us physical, they're trying to lock us on these electronic things. The internet, the TV, the phone, whatever game we're playing into, we're playing into it somehow or another. And then there's people like Grimner and Mary and uh, Rob Works and Vincent. And you guys get on the radio and you tell people what you really think. You get on the RLM chat and you post shit. Ed, this is the truth about that. Enjoy the truth. It's horrible. But you show it. you know, And you let people see what the fucking other side of what they've been told is. And I know it's not popular and... We're never going to be anything more than the fringe of the fringe of the fringe. But we're, um, uh, what's the right way to put this? I guess this is going to sound like, it. We're, but we're ahead of the curve, egotistical. Uh, we're ahead of the curve. You know, at least we're not surprised by the banking's not real. What? There's the stock market's a sham. What? You can't be serious. No, this, now this stuff is all crap. Driver's license. Oh, there you go. Get a driver's license. Yeah. I did it. If I'd have known any better, but I didn't. But nobody told me. You know? And now when you tell somebody, their lives are gone. You know, they're 50 years old. What are they going to fucking do? 
how are you going to change your life at 50 years old and try to get used to a whole nother because it's just another form of control no matter how how we live we're controlled by outside forces that dictate we do these things or else now i've made mine comfortable so that my or else is do baking soda or you're going to be a victim of this fucking man-made cancer shit that people get because it they don't know it doesn't survive in a certain kind of uh, back, uh what is the right word uh, environment lost my mind for a minute there thanks but it, it yeah it cannot live in an alkaline environment and baking soda creates an alkaline environment so mathematically the equation is real easy you just follow the steps to the end. What's there to freaking know? A teaspoon of baking soda in water. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, go go take a couple shots of gin then. Tell me how terrible that is. <laughs> the same people that tell you not to do this will do that. It's no different. They just think it is because um, doctrination. Hmm. I like to say indoctrination. Ah, oh, Frumpy's entertaining Mr. Pancakes on the RLM. They're having the fun fest reading the chat here. Ah, hmm. uh, Woody's smoking it up for everybody. I guess he got legalized too out, out there. See, ah, uh, honesty. Just, wow. Prohibition is the core of all our fucking problems. There are just some things. Um, I do. Uh-oh. I didn't mean to. Well, it'd probably be um, calling. Hold on a minute. Let me let me check my headset. Uh, how? All right, maybe it's that. I'll do that realistic head high definition audio, and see if we come out with a better result. We're at the last five minutes anyway. Grimner coming up. Oh, I do. Did I did I fix it or not? Uh oh. Yeah, when I get those phone calls, man, it, it messes up my uh, my flow. My cheese does not flow correctly when I get the phone calls. And I panic like a scared child at all, lost in a Walmart. Uh, okay, well, so I seem distant. Anyway, we made it. It's not you, it's me. It's always you, Vincent. The world, where would we be without you? And speaking of, maybe Tuesday night you can jump on the uh, In a Perfect World and come correct me on all the points I make that are incorrect. And we can argue about the color blue. Anyway, thanks a lot, everybody, for hanging through the Another Dork Table podcast. This time we were talking about honesty and such. And uh, what do we got coming up tomorrow morning? We have Grimner playing some blues. Blues! Not not rock and roll, not jazz, blues. You heard it here first, folks. Well, you just heard it here. Anyway, after that, we play trivia on the reallibertymedia.com chat where everybody tries to show they're smart and figure out the answer and type it in faster than the other people. It's called competition. And I do like my little trivial competitions. Anyway, after that, we were just warming up for Hal Anthony because he's going to come up with his uh, his side of the equation. And Hal says we're crickets because we don't take action. And he is absolutely 100% correct. You know, on an honest mode, yeah, I'd have to say absolutely. But I also defend myself with I don't believe in the system that you're fighting so when that ha if that i don't want anything from them they don't want anything from me it's a different life but if i was ever going to get involved in that game i know hal knows <laughs> so he's like an insurance um what do you call it an insurance policy <laughs> for for the legal knowledge that I, I may or may not ever need then you poor people. Then you come back on Tuesday and guess who you got? Me. And that's at uh, 7 o'clock Denmark time. I think it's 1, one on the East Coast on Tuesday. And we do In a Perfect World. And sometimes I have hostages and sometimes I don't. And then Wednesday and Friday at uh, 
6 o'clock East Coast time. You got Grandma Mary on the Rocket Chair Podcast. And she'll be grandma all over the place. And she grandma last night. I heard her today grandma on her Rocket Podcast. And then that leads up to Grimner and Moose Girl doing Freaker's Ball. And if Moose Girl finds something else to do, then we get Grimner. Oh, wait, I forgot Grim's new put, new program on Monday night at, uh, I think it's, put the time up. I forgot. I think it's, because mine, mine's nighttime to your whatever time you post. It's seven hours later. I think he does it at noon. He replaced his old show. Hey, thanks, Vinny. Uh, but he, he used to do the news when I was first new on the Real Liberty Media. And then he decided that uh, he was bored of the news. It was always the same stuff. So he stopped doing it. And we pestered and we begged and we pestered and we begged. And I quit pestering and begging, but my wife probably didn't. And Grim finally broke down and decided to, to do Grimm's Leftovers. And uh, I got to tell you, if you haven't heard it, check it out he's he's only doing an hour i think i think it should have been two because it was really good and uh monday nights i think well for me monday but i think it's noon on monday Mm. brand new show so um wait did i no 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 it's almost eight o'clock i'm done here um but uh yeah what else do we got then back after that you got the dork table on saturday at uh I believe it's 1 o'clock uh, on the East Coast time in the Americas. And I come, no, or maybe not. It might be noon. I think it's noon. And, uh, oh, yeah, he comes on, Grimner is at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Monday night. So we got him back for one show a week. Support the fucking show. Maybe he'll do another one because uh, the guy's got a lot of backlog. You know, it's not like uh, you don't... We're not learning anything here. We're just having a good time. And it's sometimes it's fun to be reminded that there's other people that know how seriously lied to we've been and are willing to put their self on the radio to tell other people about it. So uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, I suppose. But I try. I do my best. Thanks for listening, folks. And uh, we'll catch you next, uh, well, next week here on the Dork Table. <laughs> Dork out.